Hi, this is Eric Smith. Time to do another video in my video series of Think About It. These are videos where I am going through scriptures and doctrines in the scriptures. And, you know, it's something that we would read as Christians and it would make us contemplate it. Things that we are thinking about as we're reading the scriptures. And we should do that. We should contemplate what the Bible says about a lot of things and mull it over in our minds. And in this video, I'm mulling over something that is actually really important to the Christian faith. And you're going to understand it as I read these sets of verses. So I'm going to start with 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 13, verse 5. The Word of God reads, Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you are disqualified? Notice this verse is telling us to examine ourselves in the, in the faith, to actually test ourselves. Um, we need to see that uh, whether Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, is in us. We have to check ourselves. Um, the next set of verses, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 10, and the Word of God reads, Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. Notice this verse is telling us to make our call, and that's our vocation and our calling, sure. And our election sure. That's our cho uh, the choice of God to choose us unto salvation. We're to make that sure. I want to read 1 John chapter 5. And verses 11 and 13. Uh, excuse me, <laughs> 11 through 13. And this is the testimony that God has given us, uh, that, um, that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. The Apostle John is saying he wrote everything in this particular epistle so that we would know that we have salvation, that we know that we have eternal life, that we know the Son of God. So why am I reading these verses? Because Christians are to examine themselves in the faith. We're supposed to do that. And even though we have assurance of faith, and there's a lot of verses that tell us that we're assured, we still struggle in the flesh. And you know what? Your flesh can fool you into thinking that you could actually lose your salvation. Now Galatians 5 says our sinful flesh struggles against the spirit within. So that's going to happen. So even a true believer needs to examine themselves. They need to check themselves because their flesh can tell you uh, that you're not saved. And we have assurance, but we're still supposed to examine ourselves. At the same time, there may be people that profess to be Christians that are in church that really aren't Christians. And if they examine themselves, they would find out that they're not in the faith. Here's the funny thing. A lot of false converts don't really examine themselves. They just leave the faith and then tell you how bad Christianity is. Uh, I did um, other videos about that. And this is going to happen. But true believers should really check themselves in the faith. They should examine themselves. In this video, what I want you to think about is seven signs that you may not actually be in the faith if you examine yourself. Because if you're in the faith, you should be doing particular things. You should love the things that God loves, hates the thing that, hate the things that God hates, and you should be wanting to serve the Lord. But if you're doing these seven things in a consistent manner, and this is important, if you're consistently doing these things, it may indicate that you're not really a believer. And you don't even have to do all seven. You can do three or four of these things consistently. It may still show that you're not in the faith. So as I read these seven things, please don't go, well, I felt that way sometimes, or maybe I was mistaken on a doctrine. Remember, if you're consistently doing this, if this is a way of life, and you're examining yourself, then you may find that you're truly not a believer and you need to repent and trust that the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and rose again on the third day. So, let's go over these seven things. The first thing, you don't proclaim the gospel. Romans 1.16 
says we're not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God unto salvation for those who believe. In Romans 10, 14 through 17, those verses tell us that Christians are sent to proclaim the gospel because that's how uh, sinners come to faith. They come to faith by hearing the word of God, hearing the gospel. Now, if you profess to be a believer and you've never given the gospel, you never have a desire for the lost to be saved, that may be an indication that you don't know God because someone had to give you the gospel. You should be giving someone else the gospel because you have a desire for them to be saved. Are you giving the gospel? If you're giving it and you're sporadic, I understand that. But if you never gave the gospel or maybe only gave it one or two times in the years that you've been a Christian, that's not a good sign. The second thing, you badmouth and or avoid attending church. Hebrews 10.25 says, Do not forsake the assembly of the believers together. We're not supposed to do that. Colossians 1.24 says the church is the body of Christ. It's not just the building. This is the universal church. And 1 Corinthians 12.12-31 12, 12 through 31 talks about the uni unity and diversity of that body. If you say that you're a believer in Jesus Christ, but you don't want to be around other believers, you don't want to be taught the word of God uh, by qualified elders and uh, pastors, if you badmouth the church all the time and think you don't need to go, that's a sign because you can't say the indwelling Holy Spirit is telling you not to be around other believers and not to learn the Word of God. Here's a third thing. You hate and rarely read or study the Bible. 2 Timothy 2.15, Acts 17.11, and Psalm 1.2 says we should study, search, and meditate, and meditate upon the Scriptures. That's what we should be doing as Christians. Because the scriptures are God-breathed and they sanctify you. That's what 2 Timothy 3, 16-17 and John 17, 17 says. Now, don't misunderstand. Sometimes Christians don't like reading the word of God. I get that. Sometimes we're not in the mood. But when you rarely or never read the word of God, you don't want to study the word of God, and you don't love the word of God like Psalm 119 indicates, that's a bad sign because if you love the Lord, you love his word. Here's the fourth thing. You either rarely or don't pray at all. You, you rarely pray or you don't pray at all. 1 Thessalonians 5.17, Ephesians 6.18, Philippians 4.6, Matthew 6, 5 through 13 all talk about the importance of prayer and in the will of God. And prayer is part of your worship and your trust in the Lord. You bring your petitions to God. Uh, if you don't want to go to church, like I just said a minute ago, and you don't want to pray, you're basically saying you don't want to worship the Lord. You don't want to go to church and, and, and be around other believers or pray or cry out to God for the things you need, knowing that God is sanctifying you and answering those prayers in His will. Number five, you love the world and you live like the world. 1 John 2, 15-17, James 4, 4, and Romans 12, 2 warn about loving the world. We are set apart from this world. Matthew 5, 13-16 says we're salt and light. That's uh, what we are as Christians. And 1 Peter 1, 13-16, you know, it tells us to be holy because God is holy. We're salt, light, we're holy, and yet we act like the world? No. They can't be. Now, I'm not saying you can't be vexed by the world or tempted by the world. But if you're just running around and acting like the unsaved and loving the things that they love in the world and actually not loving the things of God, that's not a good sign. It's a sign that you may be an unbeliever. Number six, you deny the Trinity or the deity of Christ. This is super important. Uh, Matthew 28, 19, Mark 1, 9 through 11, um, where we see Jesus' baptism, and Romans 8, 9 through 11, all indicate that God is triune, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And in fact, in Romans 8, 9-11, through 11, God, Christ, and the Spirit are interchangeable in those verses. And in John 1, 1-3, through 3, and Colossians 1, 15-17, you clearly see the deity of Christ. You see that Christ is God. And in uh, the Gospel of John, you see seven I Am statements that indicates that Jesus Christ is deity. Jesus Christ is the Creator. 
If you don't believe that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh, the Son of God and God the Son, and you don't believe in the triune nature of God, then you're worshiping a different God. And you know what? If you're worshiping that different God that's not triune and Jesus Christ is not deity in the flesh, then there's a very strong indication that you're either mistaken and God's going to get you out of that, or you don't know God. And number seven, you add works to grace. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9 clearly says you are saved by grace through faith, not of works. And Galatians 3, 2 through 3 talks about the foolishness of trying to make perfect in the flesh, which was started by the Spirit. So if you say you're saved by grace, but then later on you start adding works to your faith, to that grace, it's no longer grace and it's no longer faith. And that's what the Apostle Paul was speaking about to the church in Gal- and the churches in Galatia. They were having that problem. Today, we have people that profess to be believers in Jesus Christ, but they're adding all kinds of works to grace. That is not Christianity. So, dear Christian, if you're consistently doing these seven things or some of these things, and it's a consistent basis, examine yourself because you need to make your call and election sure and you need to, you know, test yourself in the faith. And if you're failing these tests, you may not be saved. That's just the truth. Now again, I'm not talking about somebody that does these things occasionally or you have struggles. I'm not talking about that because in your struggles, you're going to go to the Lord. In your struggles, you're going to go to other believers for counsel. When you're avoiding all those things and you're doing those these things consistently, it's an indication that you don't know the Lord. And false converts they may actually do a good job of faking some of this thing, some of these things, but sooner or later it's going to be revealed that they're doing these things and this is how they think and that's why they leave the church. Listen to any false convert doing their deconversion story or their deconstruction story. And you know what you're going to find out? That one or many of these seven things, maybe all of them, are popping out of their mouth. They're just saying these things. They were in the church for I don't know how many years, but they always thought these things. So, dear Christian, I want you to seriously think about it because you need to examine yourself in the faith. And there's nothing wrong with examining yourself. You're not going to be perfect, but you should be consistent. And if you're doing some of these things and you're doing it on a consistent basis and you don't think there's anything wrong with it, then you know what? That's an indication that you don't know the Lord, that the Holy Spirit's not in you, and you're just faking the funk. You don't really need to do that. Let me tell you something. You can't fake the Christian uh, walk uh, for long. Sooner or later, your sin nature is going to pop out and it's going to reveal it. But some people profess to be Christians and they just reveal this all the time. Let me tell you something. You need to trust the Lord Jesus Christ. So, I did this video because I want you not to be afraid and not to freak out that you're doing something wrong, but I want you to truly think about it. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And God bless.